Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be answering a mystery of the so-called hot Jupiters, or actually a lot of other gas giants that we've discovered in the last few years or so. Today we'll talk about why is it that so many star systems have these really unusual objects with really highly eccentric orbits. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So first, let's uh, identify the problem. If we look at our own solar system, we'll discover four terrestrial or rocky planets in the middle, or actually a lot closer to the Sun. And as we move away from the Sun, we'll discover gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. And then on the outskirts, we'll discover objects like Uranus and Neptune. These are so-called ice giants. And we of course believe that this is very typical of other star systems. Basically, we expected to find something similar, at least in terms of the location and the structure, pretty much everywhere out there in the universe. And it just so happens that what we found was pretty much the opposite. We have not actually found a single star system out there that would mimic our own. But what we have found are many star systems that have these unusual objects known as hot Jupiters or other similar gas giants very very close to the parent star. In many of these systems essentially we have these really large planets super super close to the parent star and in most cases um, they're a lot closer than they should be and also in many of these star systems the actual planet instead of having a somewhat circular orbit would often have something a little bit more eccentric essentially orbits that are more oval and more um, stretched out and are not circular which would be very unusual for a planet that's really massive because in our own solar system, um, all of the gas giants have a relatively circular orbit. The planets with highest eccentricity are the ones with the smallest mass, like Mercury has the highest eccentricity of them all. And the objects um, with even higher eccentricity are usually um, asteroids or anything else located in the asteroid belt, like for example Vesta, Ceres and so on. So um, the mass has a very high correlation with eccentricity. The more mass you have, the less eccentricity you get. And it makes sense, because it's obviously a lot easier to move or to dislodge an object like Mercury than it is an object like Jupiter. Because Jupiter is several thousand times more massive than Mercury. And because of this, when we've discovered that there are a lot of gas giants that do have eccentric orbits, we were basically more confused and um, uncertain how to answer the question of how did they actually get there and how did they get such orbits. And since the original discovery of this planet right here, 51 Pegas IB, discovered in 1995, this is the first ever planet around a sun-like star, we found quite a lot more, a lot more various types of exoplanets and various types of gas giants with very close orbits to the star eccentric orbits and various masses, even more massive than Jupiter. Here's actually a simulation by Ian Webster that you can find in the description below that shows you a large number of exoplanets we've discovered and plots all of them in the same region of the solar system. And this is of course just to give you an idea of where various exoplanets are and uh, how massive and how large they are. But here if you look really closely you'll see that there are some really large massive objects that do have an eccentric orbit. And these are the planets that scientists are really not sure how to explain just yet, or at least they weren't, until the paper that just came out. The paper that you can also find in the description below that essentially uh, deals with this problem, trying to explain how massive large planets can have eccentric orbits very close to the parent star. Now for this study the scientists can only do one thing, they can only simulate things. And so they basically ran a simulation where the initial number of planets was always set to 10, but the total mass of the star system was always changed. And many different simulations were run over and over and over again just to see what is created after a few millions of years of essentially evolution of a star system. And uh, what they discovered after running these simulations is that in the system where the initial mass was much higher than the mass um, of our own solar system or other star systems, in all of these uh, systems, 
for some unknown reason, eventually the actual uh, evolution resulted in very massive, very large planets close to the star with highly eccentric orbits. However, in systems where the mass was much lower than the initial mass of the solar system, or just in systems with relatively low mass to begin with, they evolved to have circular, smaller planets and um, planets that didn't really have a lot of interaction. So in other words, if we were to take a look at two star systems that are about to be developed, with one having, let's just say, a total mass of about um, one mass of Jupiter, and the other system with like five or even six times more mass, those two systems will evolve very differently. The smaller system will be more stable, will not have as many collisions or possibly not even have as many large planets, whereas the more massive system will eventually develop these really large and really massive uh, Jupiter-like objects, or basically really large gas giants, with somewhat eccentric orbits. In other words, they'll have orbits that can technically also disrupt a lot of um, habitability in the system by kicking out other planets. But why is it that these massive giants with eccentric orbits develop in these unusual star systems and not the ones with less mass? Well, to answer this, uh, the authors of the paper took a look at what was actually happening in their simulations, and they realized that there was a lot of collisions, many different collisions happening between essentially gas giants. As these gas giants were being generated, as they were created, many of them collided with one another, and because of the total mass transfer, and of course because of the transfer of momentum, their orbits would change. They would come closer and closer to the parent star, and they would thus dislodge a lot of other planets, and possibly have them collide as well. Now, we've previously discovered uh, planets that do have eccentric Jupiter-like objects, and actually have smaller planets as well, but the chance of having a smaller planet in such a system is dramatically lower than in a system like around our own sun. In other words, it's more likely that these systems are devoid of any other smaller planets, or at least the planets like Earth might be a lot more rare in these systems compared to places like our own sun. And this also suggests that more mass leads to more collisions and more collisions lead to more destruction in the star system. And these giant impacts are also probably responsible for kicking out other planets, creating a lot of so-called rogue planets, or basically planets that have no star, and at the same time, because their orbits are eccentric and because their mass is really high, they will more often than not disrupt the entire system, creating a lot of instability in the process. Like, for example, if you take a look at the orbit of this Jupiter here after it collided with Saturn, its orbit is exceptionally eccentric now. And here, if we run the simulation a little bit faster, you'll notice how it's going to start kicking out all of this dust that I've created here, just to show you what happens when these really massive objects start orbiting around a typical star. And here, only after a few years, um, you'll notice how a lot of stuff starts basically flying apart, and it even generates these unusual formations in between the uh, material that used to orbit around the sun. So, if I run this really, really quickly, you'll notice how the entire system is going to start being disrupted pretty quickly. And it's not going to stay stable for a very long time, being destroyed by the eccentric Jupiter that orbits here. So this is what we think might happen in these systems, but because we've detected so many of them, their origin was always a mystery. And this paper does a really good job at explaining how all of this has formed and how these systems might evolve over time. And because we've discovered so many different systems that have these eccentric Jupiters, or Jupiter-like objects orbiting around the parent star, it's important to understand what happens in them. Uh, most importantly, of course, because we want to find any terrestrial objects in these systems. And it looks like, just based on what you're seeing here, the chance of planets surviving is not going to be really high. The other discoveries coming from this paper are that uh, most of these collisions happen at a relatively close distance, within about 8 or so astronomical units, so the fact that we actually have objects like Uranus and Neptune on the outskirts of the solar system of course, reinforces the fact that they were moved here later on. They most likely were created closer to where Jupiter or Saturn are, and eventually moved to the outskirts. Something similar probably happens around other star systems, 
But if the gas giants end up colliding, they will usually move closer to the star. And at the same time, this paper also gives a little bit more evidence to the creation of Planet 9. This mysterious planet uh, may have also existed in the solar system, and instead of colliding with other objects like Jupiter and Saturn, very likely ended up being kicked out to the outskirts and is somewhere out there right now. So it's definitely a pretty interesting paper and allows us to explore our ideas and theories in a little bit more detail by using computer simulations. But until we learn more, that's really it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it actually does help me quite a lot. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.